friends. I want to do it. You, you want to do what, Topher? I want to introduce us and do the welcome. All right. Okay, Topher, it is all yours. <clears throat> Hello, friends. I'm Topher, and this is Pastor Chris, and we are so happy to be with you all today. Even if you're not here in the chapel with us, we miss you so much. We do. It's lonely here without you. It's very quiet. But remember, we're doing best, we're doing what's best to keep everyone safe and healthy. Yep, we're doing our part. Yes, we are. Hey. D yes? Do you wanna hear a knock-knock joke? Sure, but then we need to start our chapel time. Oh, okay, it goes with our theme. Okay. <clears throat> knock, knock. Who's there? Atch. Atchu? Bless you! Oh. <laughs> Atchu! Like you sneezed and I said bless you because we're talking about blessings. That was a really good one, Topher. That was. Are you ready to start? You yeah. are? Okay. Hello, friends. It's so good to be with you. Topher and I are here at the chapel at St. James where we usually meet, and it's where we'll meet once again once everybody comes back. Do you remember what we would say when we sat down? I would say, this is the day the Lord has made. And you say, let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's try that now. Now, Topher will help you with the response. Ready? This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's do that again, louder so that our neighbors can hear us. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Sweet, that was great. So friends, why don't we share a peak and a pit from this past week? A what and a what? A peak and a pit. A peak is something good that's happened. Like for me, I got to be part of two baptisms last week. And a baptism is where someone, usually a baby, is blessed and welcomed into the family of God. Oh, I get it. Mm -hmm. That was so cool. It was cool. And is a pit something that wasn't good? You got it. So what was your peak, Topher? Hmm, let me think. Oh yeah, I got to one of my, watch one of my favorite shows, Fuller House. <laughs> what was your pit, Pastor Chris? Oh, so a pit for me was finding out last week that a very smart and important woman, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, died. She was a Supreme Court Justice. I didn't know her personally, but she was very important to our country. So I was very sad when I heard that news. Oh, that makes me sad too. What was your pit, Topher? That our friends can't come to school yet. Yeah, that is a pit. So friends, as your adult, ask your adult to pause the video right now and share with one another your peak for the week and your pit. When you're done, you can come back and press play. Ready, press, pause, now. And then, on the very last episode of Fuller House, Kimmy and GJ's sister were going to move out after the wedding. Uh -huh. oh, oh, no. oh, wait, are, yeah. are we back with our friends? Yeah, I, I think we are. I think they're all back. You can finish telling me that story later, Topher. Okay. Today, we'll join a huge crowd of people following Jesus. He sees their hurts and pains and cares for them in many ways. He leads them to a mountain. Let's climb the mountain. There are so many ways to climb. Remember that you can hike. Remember we hike up the mountain like this, right? Or you can use ropes. People climb up the mountains with ropes. Oh, that's good, Topher, that's really good. Sometimes um, people use a wheelchair to roll and to hike up the mountain. You can pretend to climb with yourself or with a friend. Are you ready? Okay, so pick a way to move up the mountain and we'll climb. Ready, ready, set, climb. Oh, I'm gonna use a rope. Are you using, what are you using? I'm just marching. You're just marching up the mountain? Okay, okay. 
Whew. Oh, Topher, we made it. Let's find a seat. Oh, this is a good, good rock to sit on and set all our bodies after that big climb. Hmm. So in your imagination, let's look around at all that we can see. What you got there, Topher? Binoculars. Oh. So I can see better. Okay. So, okay, I, I, I'm, I'm looking as well. What do you see? Hmm. There's a lot of people here. Yeah, there are. I think I see Jesus. Whoa. He's further up the mountain. Okay. Okay. Tell me again why I had to climb this mountain. That's a really great question, Topher. You see, in Jesus' time, people believed that mountains were holy and special places to be with God. Maybe because they reached so high up into the sky. Jesus told them about God's kingdom on this mountain. You can think of a kingdom as the way the world works or is set up. In God's kingdom, there is abundance. More than enough honor, more than enough food, more than enough love, more than enough power, more than enough resources for every child of God to thrive. Okay, now, do you remember how many Beatitudes there are? There are? Um, nine. Nine, yes, nine. One, two, two three, four, five, six, six seven, seven, eight, nine. nine. Good job. Yes, nine. So each week we'll, we'll talk about one of them. Um, so this week it's the first one, okay? And remember, it has two parts. First, Jesus makes a statement, and then he gives a promise. This is what Jesus said. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. When you think of the word poor, what do you think of? I think of when someone doesn't have enough money for things. Yeah. Yeah, we often think of not having enough money to buy to buy food or to live in a home or to get clothes or to provide for daily life when we talk about being poor. Many of the people Jesus spent time with were poor like this, yet they also felt poor in spirit. They were sad and worried that things might not get better. They were worried that things could even get worse. They certainly did not feel blessed. Maybe you have felt this way too. And Jesus tells them, blessed are the poor in spirit. <laughs> what? Jesus turns what they've been taught upside down. He said heaven and the kingdom of God belong to all the people who are poor in spirit. They are the blessed ones, the happy ones. When it feels like the rich, the ones who seem to have it all and know it all and have all the power, Jesus says true honor, belonging, and power belong to the poor, the ones without. Wow. So Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Yep. That's amazing. Sad people are blessed because God will help them feel better. Yes, you've got it. So remember when I bless our friends, I ask them to open their hands to accept the blessing. Yeah, I like that. Good, because that's this physical way to remind us we depend on God and we must be open to learning and growing and changing. It's a great thing to do when we pray to help to put our hands out like that. When we feel helpless, God promises to fill us with what we need. Things better than we could make or imagine ourselves. In Jesus' time, to be blessed meant to be happy, to the fullest, and greatly honored, considered amazing. Is it time for our blessing today? Yes. Yes, it is. And this time, I want all of you to repeat it after me. Do you think you can do that? I can. And they can too. Awesome. So remember, a blessing is something you receive. So open your hands like you're ready to receive a gift. So today, friends, before you let, we leave chapel, I would like to bless you all. So you've got it like you're receiving a gift, right? Mm -hmm. yep. And repeat after me. May God bless you. May God bless you. And keep you. 
and keep you. May you know that God loves you. May you know that God loves you. And gives you peace. And gives you peace. Amen. Amen. Friends, you are blessed. Whether you feel happy, sad, angry, or afraid, you are blessed because you follow the way of Jesus all the way up the mountain. That was so exciting. I can't wait to hear more of the Beatitudes. We will. We'll hear some more next time. See you next week, my friends. Bye. Bye.